At bikepacking.com, we've seen some really incredible handcrafted bikepacking bags. But we also know it's hard to justify spending money on those bikepacking bags when you're not sure you're going to actually enjoy the bikepacking activity. So today is the first of a series of videos in which we're going to share some free or some cheap alternatives so that you don't have to spend an arm and a leg just to go bikepacking. Let's do it. Hey everyone, so thanks again for tuning in. And if you like what you see in our videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you wanna help support us a little bit more, you can do that. And you can do so by signing up for the Bikepacking Collective. This not only includes industry discounts, monthly giveaways, but also our very own print publication shipped to your door twice a year in the Bikepacking Journal. So for more details on the Bikepacking Collective, I've provided a link below. Handlebars are actually a great and convenient place to store cargo on your bike. It's a sensible spot, clearly, and it handles the weight eh, pretty well. So I've come up with three fun and creative ways to make a free or relatively cheap handlebar system. So the first idea here is use what you have. And this kind of comes in two parts. First off, a dry bag and just some webbing straps. So some of you might already have just some webbing, a dry bag at home, some bungee straps. If you guys are into skiing, potentially some volet straps. It's as easy as stuffing your belongings inside your dry bag, putting your dry bag up against your handlebars and wrapping your dry bag with any straps that you might have. It looks the part and it's pretty stable. And if you wanted to make it a little bit more stable, you can do that by adding a piece of rope or webbing and wrapping it around one of the straps and then through either the head tube or the fork crown. I find that longer and smaller diameter bags work really well for your flat bar system, but I find with drop bars having maybe a shorter bag with a larger diameter helps a little bit more, especially depending on how wide your drop bars actually are. Because this not only allows you to use the top of the bar still, but the hoods, your hands won't be interfering with the bag when they're in the hoods. Typically two straps will do, but in some instances, if you have a super heavy load, you could add another strap or even four straps, but it's probably overkill. Another option is to use Tyvek, and many of you have probably seen this on the side of newly built homes. Tyvek is a 100% waterproof fabric. Not only is it waterproof, but it's super lightweight and it's very cheap. What you can do is basically a burrito-like style. Use this Tyvek sheet as your tortilla and all of your belongings as, well, the burrito filler. And then you can just attach it to the bars just like I did with the dry bag. A few downsides to this idea is it's probably gonna be a little bit more difficult to pack, the items won't compress, and it's pretty loud. But the upside here is you can kill two birds with one stone by using the Tyvek for a handlebar roll and also use it for your ground cloth for your shelter. And a similar idea to this is rolling up your belongings inside a foam sleeping pad. All right, so the second idea here is using some sort of a bracket-like system. So there's a ton of these on the internet, and no, they weren't made for bike packing, but of course they work extremely well for it. The use of a bracket has a few benefits here. It lowers the weight on the bike, which allows the bike to handle a little bit better. It doesn't take away as much space on your handlebars, and it allows your cockpit area to breathe a little bit more, so it won't scrunch your brake lines or cable housing as much. This bracket on Amazon was $18, paired with a $25 dry bag and say two volet straps, which will cost you about $14. We're almost talking about $60 here. So that's a big chunk that you could put towards say a bike packing bag. But say you already have a dry bag or those volet straps, well, this idea is definitely more financially feasible. Or if you just wanted to get the bracket, you had some webbing straps or bungee straps at home, and you also had some Tyvek, you could also use that system with the bracket. Obviously, there's tons of room to be creative here and of course, save money. So the third option here is to invest a little bit in the bike packing world by purchasing some sort of a bike packing dry bag. And the first one that comes to mind is the Salty Roll from Revelate Designs. This is a $40 dry bag and it already comes with daisy chains and it's actually made to fit Revelate Designs harness-like system. But you don't need to just buy the harness system. All you need is the Salty Roll and then you can use these straps or the webbing straps, volet straps, with the salty roll. The reason I really like the salty roll is because it comes with those daisy chains. And once you throw the strap through the daisy chain and around the bar, it's not gonna shift left to right because the daisy chains are keeping it in place. 
The other thing that's nice about the Salty Roll is it actually comes with two closure systems on each side. So one side has, say, some gloves. The other side has maybe your rain stuff in it. You can use that bag in a modular way to make sense of your day out while you're bikepacking. And if you end up really enjoying your time out there, then you have the dry bag for bikepacking. And then all you need to do is invest in some sort of bikepacking harness-like system. So those are the three suggestions I would give you. And either myself or my friends have used these styles of systems and they've all worked with success. Now, I was trying to get a little creative with something that you might find at a bike shop, and this is just a regular fender, and I was trying to make a little harness-like system, and it didn't really work because it was only a one-strap system, but if I was to put a little bit more time into something like this, if I got a sheet of plastic like this and say some foam spacers, I could probably come up with something. But what I wanted to do in this video is share things that were really easy to do that didn't take much time, and doing stuff like this and some arts and crafts, while it is fun, it's time consuming. And I know a lot of people out there just don't have the time. So I'm sure there's plenty of other options or ideas out there. So I'd love to hear from you all. What kind of DIY handlebar setup are you using? Leave it in the comment section below. As always, thank you all so much for tuning in. And until next time, pedal further.